Hello everyone, I hope that you're doing great. I hope you had a good week. Um, for me, this week kind of started a little hectic. I was just very busy with work and school and just trying to like figure out my time. Uh, but um, overall, it was great. Um, I survived it. <laughs> so really happy and looking forward to the weekend. Um, so yeah, like I said, I really hope that you guys are all doing well and staying safe. Um, so yeah, so I'll go ahead and get started. So for this project, I decided to analyze Jonathan Harvey. So uh, Jonathan Harvey is an English composer and he was born in 1939 in, in Coldfield. And he started, um, he studied at Cambridge and Glasgow universities. And through his time there, he became a lecturer at Southampton. So at Southampton, um, that was like his first role as like a lecturer, but eventually he became um, like kind of like a mentor and like a professor and he got like he was like very recognized for his teachings. Um, you know, he also taught at Stanford University. Um, so you can tell that like during that time he was really focused on like education, which is kind of like an important period of his life and especially like through his musical career. But um, going back to, to when he was little, uh, he began to compose at a very early age. And, this, and the biggest reason for this was because his father encouraged him to. On the article that I read, it does not specifically say if his father or anyone else in his family had any musical background, but I um, it did state that his father was a big reason and that like he continued to encourage him to compose and just start like exploring the realm of music. Um, so basically after he began to compose, he started studying music and he became really interested in like serial techniques of Schoenberg and Webern. Um, so looking up to the greats and just trying to, um, you know, learn from other people and just be inspired. And this kind of like led him to be really interested and like grow a big connection with between modality and mysticism, which right now uh, when I was researching, it really like didn't um, like I didn't like couldn't foresee how it would sound. But definitely after listening to some of his work, I can really tell like that's like still present even though it was kind of early in his career so um at the beginning when he started composing they were not the greatest but they were ahead of like they were very good for starting like they were really really good um because and they were very diverse and they they just included very different styles um that he was inspired by so i feel like he began by having this classical uh, learning and which allowed him to kind of have like kind of like the basics of music and then like that allowed him to experiment even like a, when he was barely starting. Um, he became so he continued to experiment but like it wasn't like a major thing it was just like kind of like I wouldn't call it like a side um, hustle but it was just like that big or like his main thing. It was not until the 1960s when he really started taking it seriously and it was because he became aware of time and space basically in music that like it had changed and evolved so I feel like he saw this like as an opportunity for him to explore and like experiment and just see like how maybe he could leave a, like a new generation of music or you know just a different sound um, and um, he studied at Princeton and that's where he became aware and very interested in post-tonal compositional systems. And this is important because that's where he finds out about electroacoustic techniques. And electronic is a big part of his work. Um, you'll probably hear me saying it a lot. And it's just like something that really stuck with him and like kind of like that thing that people know him for, like generally that's what you kind of know him for, for the electroacoustic techniques and just like that's kind of like his musical style. So uh, one of his most significant works throughout his like career is the trilogy, The Writings of Rudolf Steiner. And they have, again, well, that space and like the spiritual approach to his music, he was really big on that. Um, and he talks about... Um, the single note and he explored that again through his electronic acoustic style um, but it's basically like 
he would focus on the space between instruments and sounds and that's like that one note and he believed like that one note had like the power to lead the whole entire composition and like reach like your soul basically and like really impact you um it wasn't yeah it was important like the main note but it was just like that space that like combination and just like it's kind of like that mixture of sounds you know and um again but i know that his main style of music is electronic acoustic but he did explore other things um he also went into um he did compose a few operas um now this were a little different just because they were full texture darker moods uh but then again that electron electro acoustic element to him and again focusing on that spiritual transformation throughout the sound so basically his work is spiritual and electronic and acoustic uh, to kind of like sum it up obviously there's a few um, exceptions to that but generally speaking that's kind of like how you would describe his work and after he had like this great career as a composer he came kind of came back to his roots in a sense and he started giving lectures at berkeley's um and he was kind of committed to his own personal commitment um to music so he was just sharing his knowledge his perspective and just his techniques and stuff like that which i think is really interesting um just because he has a very uh unique uh, view of music and opinion and just like perspective which I feel like is very important because if I feel like it's kind of like full circle the fact that he used to go to university to find this great and get inspired and now he's finishing his career as a composer in, at, at a university and like just like sharing his expertise so I just think it's kind of like closing of a chapter and um, and but with this, one thing um, that's very important is the fact that yes, he experimented a lot with sound and like elements and just different instruments. But a lot of the things uh, that he created had a lot like structure, even though they were like very experimental, they had structure. And that was because um, he got um, classical training uh, in music. So I feel like that really helped him and it was like a basis for him to have the basic knowledge of music and then be able to experiment with it. So I think that's kind of really um, interesting and important in his career as well. So um, the piece that I decided to analyze, it's called Imaginings 4. And this is from an album, which is called The Essential Works. Um, and there's like kind of like a subtitle, which I know I'm probably going to get wrong, so please forgive me. But it says, Mordigas uh, Plango Vivos Boco. Um, so that's the name of the album. And um, I'm actually like really considering uh, listening to it just because it's very interesting, but I'll get into that. Um, so as soon as the song started, uh, you can already hear that electronic uh, element to it right off the bat. As soon as it started playing, I was like, okay, yeah, this is going to be electronic. It was just very interesting and it, it like kind of caught me off guard just because like I was like going into that vibe where it was going to be very electronic and just like electronic sounds. But he combined it with like traditional, like you can hear a violin and even the violin, even though it sounds like classical, like what a normal right uh, violin sounds, but it just sounds electronic. But at the same time, it sounds very classical. It's just like this weird mixture. And I feel like that's like that one, like that single uh, note that he talks about is kind of like that mixture between both. Um, so it was like kind of really interesting to recognize that in his work. Um, very abstract. And there seems to have like a uh, sense of space. He created that. Um, there's like echoes and like sometimes it feels like there's like little laser guns. I don't know. Like that's kind of like the visual I got. But um, and through the instrumental uh, instruments like the violin and stuff like that, he would just use crescendos, and those were part of the background, which kind of like it was. It just gave a lot of contrast. Um, like I said, contrast in this song that I was able to notice came in two ways. It was the sound of like mixing traditional and electronic which the electronic was very abstract and you cannot really like tell what it is and then the traditional one which is the violin um and one thing that i really liked was also how there was like parts of the song where there was like not complete silence and i would like kind of describe this as white noise but it just kind of like 
helps to visualize that you're like kind of in space and just listening to this like I don't know it was very very interesting and like I'm really intrigued as to how like he got to make such compositions obviously I know nothing about composing but I think that um it was just very interesting and like the sound it sounds electronic but classical it's just like a really cool mixture um throughout the piece there's variation and repetition you can hear a certain part of the song and recognize it but it's not the same um and one thing that i was really uh kind of like um it just caught me off guard was the fact that i was expecting like a very structured like like crescendos beats and stuff like that there's really not a beat that you can recognize throughout the song but also even though it's like very abstract and very like you know it's very free form it feels structured which was very um you know i feel like it really describes his work and like the fact that um again he got classical training and like that's very structured so i feel like you can still see the structure by being experimental and just with the sounds and also some of the music sounded as it was being played on reverse um which i think it was very different and i wouldn't like i don't imagine i mean now we could do it with like a little app or something that we can find i'm unaware but i'm pretty sure like there's something out there that can do it but i feel like if it was done just like with the violin and like with like such skill and technique to make it sound like it's going backwards and reverse is really cool um so yes and overall this piece seems to be like dark and colorful at the same time which was again kind of like a clash and like that in between single note where it feels dark and like dramatic just because of like that um traditional sound but also it feels colorful just because you have that electronic and like i was like it was just like this weird mixture so yeah it was very great and i really recommend uh, for you to give it a listen it's like three minutes long obviously you can listen to the whole album he does have a few other albums um but yeah, it was really interesting. It's not what you expect, um, which is something that I kind of like when I listen to music. So yes. So my thoughts on this um, lesson. First, um, I just found it very interesting that he knew a lot about classical music and its traditional roots because I feel like sometimes like people just experiment when they don't know something. Um, they just like sometimes like you can go the route where it's like, I'll just do whatever I want. Um, I'm not really going to care about the rules and then like some other like in his case he knew about all the rules and like kind of like basic composition and he was able to take that and make it his own so I thought that was like really interesting like his approach to his style which I think it works and it might not work for someone else but I'm glad that it works for him um I think like like I said I'm really intrigued just because like through his work it was like spiritual and I just didn't like mystical and I just didn't know what to expect so I'm really intrigued to listen to a few of his operas and see how like his work um is like d done in different mediums you know for an opera or like chamber music like I just want to see like I'm really intrigued to see how like he kind of like changed and evolved through different scenarios um and about this class and like how it reminds me basically like I feel like his work is experimenting with sound and I feel like that many other composers that we have been learning about in class in the past uh, few weeks is just the like they share a very similar path which is like finding their voice through their music um, and just allowing for something like different and you to come about um, which I think is kind of like what makes great people come about and like this great composers so you know, I'm just glad that many people have done that where they feel that they can share their musical creativity and just their creativity, like, in general, and just inspire many others, which he does. You know, he went back to university and started teaching, so I'm really happy and I really enjoy um, this week. So with that, I'll finish my video. Um, I'm really glad um, that I listened to his music. I hope... Um, that you enjoyed my video and yeah we'll see you next week stay safe bye